Hey guys, so we are in Ableton version 9.5 and I wanted to show you some of the upgrades that have happened in this so that you can stay familiar with, with the instruments and effects that are in the program. So if you've upgraded to 9.5, you may have noticed some changes or you may have not yet explored them. So that's what we're gonna do right now is just get into it. The biggest upgrade is to the simpler instrument, which is this one right here. And it gives you a whole lot more control over your loops and samples than ever before. So that's the very first uh, difference here is if you're pulling in simpler and you don't recognize the instrument or how to use it anymore, uh, I'll get into that really quickly. So it works pretty much the same way. You find an audio sample, you drop it right in. And what it does now is you could literally warp the track from inside this instrument, which is very, very cool. So let me go through some of the great features. So right now we're in classic mode and I just dropped the sample in. And right now we're at 121 BPM. And the warping has been turned on. So if I play the part on C3, plays, it warps very, very good. But what's different now is if I slow down the tempo or speed it up, it will also slow down the loop or the part. So that's extremely cool. So what that means is when you drag in a loop or something like that, it doesn't have to be a specific tempo for it to work. You could literally just drop it in and set the warp markers and if it doesn't automatically pick it up, you could come in and set the beginning and end points. And if you want to shorten it, you can come over here and and so forth. So very cool so far here. Now, if I play this at different keys, the pitch will change, but the tempo will stay the same. That's another really cool new feature. So just played it at different uh, keys, and as you notice, it plays higher and lower. Very, very cool. If you want it to, let's go ahead and drag in, here we go. We'll, we'll drag this in here. So let me do this. I'm gonna make the sample shorter here. And I'm gonna turn the loop off. Okay, great. So now if I turn the warp off here, you hear that the sample goes much, much faster, higher and slower at lower keys. So that's the way the simpler worked before. So if you want it to work that same way, you just simply turn the warp off. Once the warp is on, it will always stay the same length. So that's the general way this works. Let me uh, back up here and get back to our drum loop. So what we can do here is we can now switch to, for example, one shots, and then we could Choose a shot here. And this will either trigger to play the whole beginning to end, or I can choose gate, and it will only play as long as I have the key held down. So, like so. And once again, this will conform to the tempo as long as the warp is on. And if we don't want that, then we could turn the warp off. Now the next option here is very, very cool. It's the slice option. So by clicking here, 
And I'm just going to pull this all the way. What it's going to do is it's going to put slices in all the transient locations. And you can choose a sensitivity. If any of you remember a program made by Steinberg called Recycle, this is essentially what it used to do, right? So you can choose your sensitivity to how many of these transients it's going to pick up on. So you can have or So with the sensitivity, you can have it pick on just a few different points and then play through. And then you can rearrange the way that's played. And it'll play all the way through when it's on trigger mode. If you put it on gate mode, then it will cut when you pull your finger off the note. Essentially, this is laying all of these different cuts on different notes, on different keys on the keyboard. And this allows you to really quickly access all the sounds and play them all, all on different notes. So if I set it to the most sensitive, now I've got cuts on pretty much all the slices here. And this kind of works a lot like a slicing to a drum rack instrument. And once again, when the warping is on, so it sounds time stretched because you're slowing down because it's, it's literally time stretching each of the notes. Now, if you don't want that, you can turn warp off and then it'll just play all the parts at the regular speed. And if you have uh, quick slices, just one beat, then that works better. But if you have longer slices where the tempo is important, then you want to keep the warp on. So these are now the three modes. So just remember that the classic mode will loop the whole section. The one shot plays it just one time through, and the classic mode will do that as well if you turn loop off. And then slice mode will slice up your beats or vocals or whatever you've got here, bass lines, and put each cut, depending on the amount of sensitivity you've assigned, and it will allow you to play this across a keyboard. One final thing that I will share with you is you can actually play more than one part at a time if you set to poly instead of mono. So this way I can be hitting multiple parts at the same time. So you could really get things nice and complicated, especially with melodic parts and all kinds of different things. So the simpler has become a very powerful tool and it should probably be a go-to tool for you to use for many different purposes now. So the next tab here is the controls. And this, we get into the filters. And this is very, very cool because uh, now they have more filters that are modeled after analog synths and samplers, I believe. And they sound dirty in the, the best possible way. So without further ado, let's get into that. So we've got our regular part. I'm going to um, go into classic mode and loop this. And now I'm just going to play with the filter to kind of show you. So this is a filter that you're familiar with. But now we can switch to different filter modes. And we also have this drive, which is great.
So on a peak like this, let's compare. Clean. OSR. MS2. Turn the drive off. And of course you still have your high pass. Mid or band pass. Band reject. So that's the filter, and it's well worth getting into. This, these filter options are also added to the auto filter, and you just, when you drag in your, your auto filter, you just want to click this upgrade button, and then it gives you all the options. So definitely something that you are going to want to experiment with. Really, really good sounding filter. The next thing I want to get into is pitch envelope, which is really an important part of sampling, especially if you've got something that doesn't have a very good transient. So if we go back into our sampler here, or our sample section, let me pull in an ambient background here, all right? And see if we can give this some volume. So not a whole lot going on here, right? Um, and it's easy for things that don't really cut through with a, with a spike or a transient to get lost in a mix. But what we have here is our pitch envelope. So what this does is this creates like a, a nice little spike in, uh, in the pitch and then drops it very quickly or, or at whatever length we would like. So with that said, let me give you an example. So I'm going to make this four octaves up. So it really, so this is on, this is off. And you can do some pretty interesting sounds with this, but we just want to kind of give like a transient. So I'm going to back off the decay. And that might be a little much. Go 24, which is two octaves up. As you can hear, a pretty big difference. So this is a great way to give something some uh, some snap to it. All right, so next we get into the LFO that's built in to Simpler, which is very cool. So you can control the pitch, panning, filter, and velocity. So let's play with the filter here. I'm going to set this just to half note. And I've just set the filter here. And I'm going to turn the filter all the way up so you can really hear what's happening. You have uh, three quarters, and of course, you can set the amount of that.
Same goes for pitch. And of course, volume. And if we want something that's a bit more on and off, we can set to square and sounds more like a cut. So you get the idea. So the uh, LFO is another very cool tool now built into Simpler. Also, you may notice that our waveforms are much more detailed here than they used to be. So you can really get in close on these suckers. Much cleaner looking. So although I haven't downloaded them here, on the site it reports there's a new instrument called bass, obviously made for bass, multi, and poly. So those are just new synths that are available and you can check those out on your own. It's a little beyond what we're going into here, but those are the major updates in Ableton 9.5. So if you had any confusion as to why your simpler instrument looked different, that would be why. And also, the last thing that I'll share with you is, as you'll notice on tracks, now the tracks are automatically colored and then the clips that go in there match the color of the track, which can be really good when you're in the arrangement window and trying to find a certain part. Uh, obviously, you still have the choice of being able to change the colors of the tracks or the individual clips, but just by default, it kind of organizes everything properly. So there you have it. I hope this helps you guys. And uh, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up.